Right, John, well, welcome to Countdown and to Australia for the first time. Now, we don't know that much about the band Bon Jovi, uh, so if you could just tell us the history from the start, really. Well, I basically put the band together about a year and a half ago, right. and it was a Randy song, which is the single of our first album called Runaway. And uh, what had happened was every record company seemed in, in America turned down this song, and uh, a local radio station here in New York picked it up and it started to spread nationwide and I had what was slowly becoming a hit without a band and uh, I had been using members of Rick Springfield's band and uh, of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band that's who did the tapes with me in the studio right. and uh, it was time to put together a band so I called up Dave Rashbaum who was uh, a keyboard player I played with through the years and then uh, the two of us started looking I found then Alec John Such our bass player who led me to Tico Torres, who was with a band called Frankie and the Knockouts at the time. Right. And then uh, we started playing out and stumbled upon Richie Sambora, our lead guitar player, who I later hired. And uh, that was really the band. It came together in, a, in just a few short weeks. Right now, from then, what happened? Well, by then, uh, you know, the, the actual romantic kind of a dream that you think that a record company guy pulls a contract out of a drawer and says, here you go, you know, it's signed. I had. Uh, laid down months into years of groundwork, you know, trying to get that major label and making the contacts. Mm. So at this time, I was lucky enough that I had attorneys to take over uh, the dealings with record companies. And uh, we had played one showcase um, at a party for a radio syndicate show that was here called Rock USA with Scandal. And it just happened, it was like a, a place where all the record <coughs> companies converged to meet over this party for this new syndicate and it was a chance for me to take the band live right. and it was like one of the first times and so we played and uh, that pretty much started the buzz between right. the record companies. Right now I was talking to Kish yesterday and um, we were talking about sort of like um, musical um, directions that seem to sort of you know sort of go around either in a sort of a merry-go-round um, I mean, over the last two to three years in Australia, even here, especially in England, uh, there was so, it was so dominated by synthesized groups. Uh, and then there was this switch around again to back to sort of rock and roll and, and good heavy rock and roll. Uh, what do you attribute that to? I mean, obviously, with, with back, back to like when you got the reaction from the radio station with Runaway. Yeah. At that time, a lot of the things like... Uh the synthesized sounds, the English synthesized sounds were on the radio here. So music that we were doing, um, that I was writing a lot of, wasn't quite that. Um, and so that's probably what hurt us at the time with the record company, but it's a good thing because it seems that it's come and gone already. Right. Um, I don't think that things like the hard rock and heavy metal have ever gone away. They've just sort of maybe taken a back seat for a little while and they come up and go back. But it seems that's the most consistent thing uh, in music, or that's pretty much the roots of rock and roll almost, you know, I mean, as opposed to a disco sound or the synthesized pop sounds, they seem to come and go, here in right. America at least. Um, the kids uh, like guitars, you know, and they yeah. like a lot of harmony, and they like uh, the driving live sound, you know, as opposed to seeing maybe a synthesized band where if you were to see it live, you'd almost say I should stay home and listen to the record because it's more exciting. I need personally and I like our audiences to come to see us and to sweat as much as I sweat on the stage, you know, or if I can get them to sweat half as much as I do, I know I've had a successful show. Right. Because I, I find with a lot of those synthesized bands, uh, you know, with a bottle of Perrier on the stage saying, well, this is wonderful, it, that's not what I'm all about, you right. know. I personally feel that if I ever go to a show and am not involved, that I don't want to be there. You know, I'd rather sit home and watch it on MTV or whatever, you know, watching it at home or just listening to the record and imagining that would, in your head that it would be better. Because right. I've seen some of these synthesized bands that are great musicians. Uh, but if there's no heart, I, to me, heart is 80% of the band. I mean, I would rather play with guys that are only 80% uh, of the greatest musicians around, you know, as opposed to those amazing musicians who have no feel, who don't know that if I decide to take something off into a different direction, if I just decide to go off on a solo or something, my band knows that I'm going there. They, they all have that just natural feel, rhythm of yeah. what's going on. Like somebody like a Springsteen, he gets his audience so involved 
and he might go into one of his stories and start letting you know about that story, his band knows to follow him as opposed to somebody who knows that it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, solo, verse, chorus out. Right. You know, and then you say, oh, this is wonderful. I got my popcorn and my T-shirt. I'm going home now, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, to me, your heart is, is 80% of the whole thing. All right, well, we wish you luck. Thank and you. And we look forward to breaking in the charts in Australia and then coming down. I'd love to. You'd like that audience. All right. An ACDC homegrown audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Thank you.